this good afternoon children this is your english teacher mrs uh, rebecca uh, yeah please uh, okay good afternoon children this is your teacher mrs rebecca and we're going to study or learn about a new lesson a day in the country written by anton pavlovich shekov so move on to before we start the lesson let's uh, read about the author and it's it's given on page number 44 on page number 44 i'll just read out anton pavlovich shekov was a russian physician who is highly acclaimed as a playwright and a short story writer he is considered as one of the greatest writers of short fiction in history known as the master of short stories in 1888 shekov was awarded the pushkin prize and the very next year he was elected a member of the society of lovers of russian literature so here we find that anton pavlovich shekov was a russian playwright playwright such dramas and uh, the story and he was a short story writer and now we are learning about a short story written by anton uh, a day in the country so let's move on so here the story is a well, the the story is about a homeless cobbler charenty and two orphan uh, children siblings fyokla and danika her brother and Danilka is caught in a situation where his hand is stuck into uh, the hole of a tree, and his sister goes uh, through the village in search of a particular person, and she addresses everyone as uncle, but there was only one person who, from whom she expected help, and he was a uh, charity the cobbler, and then uh, we learn. we see that uh, these children learn a lot from charenti so the story the theme of this story is that uh, we can learn not only by books but by nature as well so nurturing nature nature is full of lessons and the people in this village everyone knew many many things but from that only charenti was the one who was willing to share his knowledge with these two children and nowadays we find that everyone is busy with technology and we forget to appreciate the nature around us so let's move on let's move on a day in the country now just look at the title of the lesson a day in a country country is not we are not talking about any nation but it's a vast land outside your city or district a vast uninhabited land where no one stays okay when you go go by train or when you go in the outskirts of the city you find there are vast areas of land where it's not inhabited by anyone you see there many trees is almost green right so that is a country the outskirts of the city that's the country so we are learning a day in the country so the name is given a day in the country that means in that single day these two children learn a lot from charenti that's why the title is title given is a day in the country we'll read out 
between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. A dark leaden colored mass is creeping over the sky towards the sun. Red zigzags of lightning gleam here and there across it. There is a sound of far away rumbling. A warm wind frolics over the grass, bends the trees and stirs up the dust. In a minute, there will be a spurt of May rain and a real storm will begin. The setting of this story is in rural Russia. And here, the setting is about the timing given is between 8 and 9 in the morning. And it is the day when the May rain is about to begin. Look at this. A dark leaden colored mass. What is a mass? A large body of something with no definite shape. Mass, a dark leaden Color. Leaden means dull gray. So the meaning of leaden color. My handwriting is visible. Dull gray. Dull gray color that was creeping over the sky. Obviously, there are it is clouds. Clouds are creeping in the sky towards the sun. Clouds are spreading. Right. Red zigzags of lightning gleam here and there. Gleam means shine brightly with reflected light. I'll write down here. Gleam means shine brightly. with reflected light. So red zigzag, zigzags of lightning gleam here and there. See here and there, they could see this lightning in the sky and then there's a sound of far away rumbling. Rumbling is a deep resonant sound. We can say that's thundering, right? Rumbling. Rumbling is deep resonant sound. You know, rumbling when you're, when you're very hungry, you say my stomach is rumbling because you're very hungry. Here, the sound is made by the clouds. You, you see in the first line, how are the clouds? The clouds are dark, leaden colored mass. The clouds look like mass, mass of something. And then you see lightning, thundering, and a warm wind frolics. Frolics means move playfully. Playfully, the wind is moving on grass, trees, and it is stirring up the dust. And that was the indication that a storm is approaching. And in a minute, there will be a spurt of May rain. Spurt. Spurt means gush out gush out in a sudden and forceful stream okay gush out in a Gush out in a sudden and forceful stream. You stopped. Gush out in a sudden and forceful stream. That was about the May rain. And a real storm is going to begin. Let's move on. So, this is about the atmosphere which Shekhov is, is explaining here, the setting. It was a day, a rainy day, and he has explained it so very nicely. Let's move on.
Fayokla, a little girl of six, is running through the village looking for Terenti the cobbler. The white-haired, barefoot child is pale. Her eyes are wide open. Her lips are trembling. Fayokla and her brother are orphans. Look at her age is six and she is running through the village looking for someone. She was looking for Terenti, who, who shows real affection for these two siblings. And look at the description of Fayokla. She has white hairs, barefoot. Barefoot is she is not wearing any sandals or chapels. Barefoot child is pale. Pale is a word when you are ill, when you are sick, the color of your face changes. You look dull. That is pale. This girl looks pale. Her eyes are wide open. Pale when you are frightened. Sometimes when you are frightened, the color of your face changes. It becomes pale. This girl, this child looks pale. Her eyes are wide open and her lips are trembling. That, that means she's frightened. We'll move on. Uncle, where is Terenti? She asks everyone she meets. No one answers. They are all preoccupied with the approaching storm and take refuge in their huts. At last, she meets Silantis Silich, the sacristan, Terenti's friend. He is coming along, staggering from the wind. Now, this child is running through the village and asking everyone. She's addressing everyone. Uncle, uncle, where is Terenti? And then she asks everyone she meets, but no one is bothered to just wait a minute and answer. What is the reason? Everyone is preoccupied. What is the meaning of preoccupied? Preoccupied. Preoccupied Occupy. means thinking or worrying about something too much. Thinking or worrying about something. Thinking or worrying about something. For something. Thinking or worrying too much about something. Okay. That's preoccupied. These villages, why didn't they answer her? Because they were too, they were worried about the approaching storm. They, they, they were worried about the approaching storm and they were taking refuge in their huts. Right? Huts. Now, that means it's a village. At last, she meets Silante Silich. Silante Silich is a sacristan. Sacristan is a person who works in a church who takes care of the worship articles in the church. And he is Terenti's friend. And he's, and when they meet him, he is coming along, staggering from the wind. What do you mean by staggering? Staggering means to, to walk unsteady, to stagger. To stagger means to walk unsteadily. To walk unsteadily. That is stagger. Right? So, staggering, when you add ing, it becomes present continuous. He is coming along staggering from the wind. Uncle! Where is Terenti? At the kitchen gardens, answers Silenti. Kitchen gardens are a place or an area reserved to grow uh, fruits or vegetables. It's a vegetable plot. It's apart from residential, uh, it's a part of residential gardens where you keep it, you, uh, it's used to grow crops, 
uh, sorry, not crops, uh, vegetables and things for your domestic use. It's only for your house. That's kitchen gardens. The girl runs behind the huts to the kitchen gardens and there finds Terenti. The tall old man with a thin pockmarked face, very long legs and bare feet, dressed in a woman's tattered jacket, standing near the vegetable plots, looking with drowsy eyes at the dark storm cloud. Now here we find the description of Terenti. Now he was standing behind the huts, so behind the huts in the kitchen garden. Now how he has been described here, he is tall, he is old, with a thin pocked mark, pock marked face. Pock marked face are the black uh, dots on the face. Maybe because of any uh, uh, chicken pox. All the, so his face was covered with, with the pock marks. Very long legs. He was tall, he was thin and bare feet. Even he is not wearing any chapels or sandals. Remember he is a homeless cobbler. Dressed in women's tattered jacket. So his jacket was old and worn out. Tattered. Old and torn. So we find Terenti is wearing a woman's jacket. And how it is? It is tattered. It is old and torn. And it's standing near the vegetable plots and it's looking at the skies with drowsy eyes. So everyone, everyone is preoccupied with the storm, the approaching storm. Even this Terenti is looking at the sky, looking at the storm cloud. On his long crane-like legs, he sways in the wind like a starling coat, crane. So the uh, author compares Terenti's legs with crane. Crane is a water bird, is a bird with long thin legs. It helps it to stand in the sand with water and not to slide down. And he sways crane-like legs and he sways in the wind like a starling coat. So the, the starling coat is given in your textbook. The meaning, a songbird with a straight beak. Okay, so here we find the description of Terenti. Uncle Terenti, the white-headed girl, addresses him. Uncle, darling. Now, how, how do we address someone? Addressing someone. When you talk, when you talk to someone, you sometimes use your name or you use title if they have one. Or you express your feelings about that person. Right? So, uh, how you feel about them. So, sometimes you use the word darling or stupid. That is addressing someone. Okay, how do you address your friends? How do you address your mom, your teacher? That's addressing someone. You address something by the name, sometimes by the name, or if they have any title, like teacher. Or if uh, sometimes you show your feelings, how do you feel about that person? You how you feel about that and you call them as a darling or stupid or any other word that you like. Okay. The white-headed girl addresses him, Uncle Darling. Terenti bends down to Fayakla. Now why he bends down? This is quite a tall man and Fayakla is a six-year-old girl. Terenti bends down. 
Kalenti bends down to Fayukla and his grim face is overspread with a smile, such as come into people's faces when they look at something little, foolish and absurd, but warmly loved. Grim face. Grim means this word we had learned in the uh, lesson, the most important person. Grim face. Grim means serious face. So when he was looking at the clouds, he was serious. But when he looks at Fayakla, his face expression changes. His face is uh, overspread with smile. Such as come into people's faces when they look at something little, foolish and absurd. Absurd means stupid or un un unreasonable. Stupid and unreasonable. That is the meaning for absurd. But warmly loved. Ah, Fayokla, he says tenderly. Where have you come from? Uncle Terenti, says Fayokla, with a sob, tugging at the lapel of the cobbler's coat. Brother Danilka has had an accident. Come along. Now we come to know why this girl was searching Terenti. Why she, she looked pale? Why was she frightened? Because her brother has had an accident and she, she approaches only Terenti because she knew that Terenti is the only one who would help her. With a sob, sobbing is you cry noisily with deep breaths, that's sobbing, right? So she, with the sob, she tugs at the lapel, lapel at the cobbler's coat. Now, lapel is a folded part on the coat, just below the collar, you find this lapel, that is called as lapel. She tugs at it, she pulls and she says, Brother Danilka has had an accident. Come along, come and help us. What sort of accident? Oh, what thunder? Holy, holy, holy. What sort of accident? In the count's corpse, Danilka stuck his hand into a hole in a tree and he can't get it out. Come along, uncle. Do be kind and pull his hand out. She's worried about her brother. And then what sort of accident now? When he he hears about it, he says, what, what sort of accident? And then looks at the sky. What thunder? And he just leaves behind everything and just goes on with this girl to help her. Now she's now he is more worried about the child than the approaching storm. In the count's corpse, C O P E S E corpse is a thicket grove or growth of small trees. Corpse. It's given in your textbook. A small group of trees. So in counts corpse. So now where the accident has taken place in the counts in the counts corpse. Danica stuck his hand into a hole of a tree and he can't get it out. So that's what the accident has taken place. Stuck, stuck his hand. Right? So stuck is the past tense of stick. So stick his hand in. Stuck. Is the past, stuck is the past tense of stick. How was it he put his hand in? And what for? He wanted to get a cuckoo's egg out of the hole for me. So why he has stuck his hand in? To get the egg of a bird named cuckoo. For his, for his sister. The day had, has hardly begun. And already you are in trouble. Terenti shook his head. Well, 
What am I to do with you now? I must come. I must come, little child. And then he goes along with the child to help her brother. The day had hardly begun. Hardly. Hardly means only just the day has begun. Only just the day has begun and already you are in trouble. Right. And then Terenti shook his head. Well, now I have to come with you and I have to help you. And then he goes along with the child to help her brother out of the problem. We'll stop here children and I'll continue in the next video. Thank you very much. I'll just stop it.